Hello chat and how you all doing? Welcome to this uh, Week in Stupid for the 20th of March 2022. I personally had a bad week, so I have depression right now. I got the gloomies, but hopefully, hashtag together, we're going to cheer each other up. By the end of this episode, we are all going to be happy with a big smile on our faces. Now, you may be wondering why am I really that upset? Why am I so sad? Well, it all started at the beginning of the week when my wife came in the room and uh, she brought the heating bill, put it on the table. Now, I didn't pay much attention to it because I was playing Eldon Ring, getting hit by Margaret's big stick. But while I was fighting the boss, like with the corner of my eye, I noticed the number on that heating bill, a number which went up significantly since last month. So this was my genuine reaction. Holy Jesus. What is that? Do you guys think that this picture exists in an alternate reality? Because I want to go to that reality. I would vote for her in a heartbeat. Like this, any politician that does this, bam, my stamp is on the paper. But since there isn't a politician that talks about this right now, I remain depressed. So I decided to go out with my wife on St. Patrick Day. We don't celebrate St. Patrick Day, but a lot of you bothered me about it and wished me a happy St. Patrick Day. Me from Romania, never heard about it, but I'm like, okay, you know. I guess I can go out. It's it's a reason. Why not? So I go to this American-themed restaurant. And they're playing on this cinema theme. The whole thing looks like a studio. And the menu has the name of famous uh, American actors and movies. And as I'm trying to figure out what to order, I notice this. Morgan Freeman. Black Angus. <laughs> Holy shit, the racismus is following me. The racismus is following following me everywhere. So I start laughing, and the waiter goes like, wow, what, what's so funny? And everyone is looking at me, curious, and I'm like, you didn't get it. You need to spend at least $100,000 in student debt at an American university so that an academic can lecture you for at least four years so you can understand why this is bad. So this made me feel even more depressed. Because now I'm like disconnected from the world. Now no one gets the jokes that I have. No one understands the racismus that I see. I can't educate people. So I go home and I, I'm still depressed. So I, I do the only thing that people can do, which is reading the news. Uh, hopefully someone is more depressed than me and that's going to make me happy. It's going to make me appreciate that things aren't that bad. And yeah and behold, I actually found such a person. Just take a look at this article from The Sun. Our hellish neighbor installed a mannequin to stare into our bedroom. And now we have to dress in the dark. So let me see if I get this straight. They probably had an argument with their neighbor, which is not covered in this article. Like, we don't know what led up to this. But the neighbor installed a window to his house and then placed a mannequin with a realistic blonde hair-like wig in order to make it more believable and caused these people to feel like they're being watched. Like, what level of autism is this? What type of neighbor does something like this? And apparently, they were living in the dock because they installed drapes and they pulled them on because they felt like they were being watched constantly. And they couldn't shower properly either. And I'm thinking like, but why though? Like, look, if your neighbor installs a mannequin, why can't you buy like some of those creepy porcelain dolls and put them in the window so that they're looking at your neighbor? I mean, you escalate things. You don't just sit there and take it. You do it the Eastern European way. You go to a farmer and you buy some chicken heads and you put them in the window to look at the neighbor. Like, come on, do something. Do something. But no, instead they went and they sued. They sued the, the hellish neighbor, which uh, apparently wasn't the grounds for a lawsuit. Apparently, I know this is a shocker, but people can put mannequins in their window if they feel like it. So now they're, they're still living uncomfortably for some reason, even though they know it's a mannequin, even though they know that someone isn't watching. It's like the, the fear, I guess. So, um, 
you know, this makes me happy. This makes me happy because it shows that there are other people out there who have it worse than me. Like, there, there are people who have some problems that I don't. And I'm like, you know what? At least I don't have that type of neighbors. Because uh, I, I would have gone for the chicken heads, honestly. And my neighbor being Eastern European, he would also escalate things further. So, it, it's best that I don't have this ish. Now, uh, there is one way. I could uh, cheer up and maybe you guys, maybe you guys from the chat can help me cheer up because I just thought about the perfect solution. Next month, my birthday is coming up, 2 of April, and I know what I want. I want a Daki Makura. It's not expensive, by the way, okay? It's not expensive. But the thing is, if I buy it, my wife is going to freak out. But if you guys buy it, then it can be like, oh, it's just a gift. It's just a gift, you know, like, what can I do? So yeah, I, I want a Dakimakura. If you don't know what the Dakimakura is, Google it, okay? Stop watching this, pause the video, Google it, and you will see. But I don't want any Dakimakura, okay? Not, not any Dakimakura. I want a Zelensky Dakimakura because it has been advertised in the New York Post and God, do I not want one of it. Look at this, in bed with Zelensky. I can then say that I have been in bed with the Ukrainians. The pillows of the Ukrainian president's face have sold out. Man, there are some thirsty, thirsty women out there. Some very thirsty ladies. Look at this. Ushkshi. Ushkshi. He may be busy thwarting assassination attempts and defending his country during wartime, but you can still spend the night cozied up with the Ukrainian president Vladimir Zelensky, the New York Post writes. The politician who has become an unexpected sex symbol. Oh my god, like the, the power, the masculinity, the virility in those pillows. Since Russia launched the invasion in Ukraine, now his face features on pillows made by the Czech designer Thomas Brinek. Many people, mostly of the fairer sex, the thirsty ladies, see him as some kind of sex symbol. So I got an idea on how to make a pillow which would look like he is actually in their bed. Brinek told Reuters, I need this in my life, chat. I need this. But unfortunately, it has sold out. Maybe I can treat it like an NFT. You know, I get my hands on one. I, I hold it. Hold it. Diamond hands, chat. Diamond hands. And when there aren't any on the market and the prices goes up, then I sell so it. So all in all, I want the Daki Makura for Christmas. A President Zelensky one, no other will do. <laughs> all right, uh, last week, it was 8th of March. Actually, it wasn't last week. It wasn't Women's Day last week, but uh, the articles about it came out. And um, the most interesting one that I could find is London Dungeon. You see, on 8th of March, a lot of corporations, businesses, and government organizations are trying to show how progressive they are and how much they care about women. Preferably, they should care about women all the time, but I know they, they care about only women on 8th of March. And that's like, all right, maximum progressiveness, boys. Let's virtue signal like we've never virtue signaled before. And one of the most interesting virtue signals and by the way, the definition of a virtue signal is pandering. Like doing something that doesn't help anyone, but everyone goes around you and they go like, Oh, you're such a progressive person. Oh, you're the gift from Jesus. Jesus himself shut down the toilet and that shut was you and you came to us. You're so progressive. Oh. Now, London Dungeon, if you don't know what it is, no, it's not a kinky thing. It's... um. It's very difficult to describe, actually, but it's a really good attraction. Like, if you actually go to London, you should visit. It's kind of like a theater, if you will, and the actors are putting on a live role play with elements that happened in London's past. So you have, like, an entire section with uh, the plague. You've got another section with, like, remember, remember the 5th of November. You know, like that type of thing. And one of them is also with Jack the Ripper. Now, for those of you who do not know, Jack the Ripper was a serial killer in London. His victims were women. Uh, very grisly stuff. And do you know what the progressive thought? Do you know what they... Uh, on, on Women's Day, on 8th of March, do you know what would make women happy? If we make Jack the Ripper into Jackie, not the Ripper. Or sorry, Jackie. Jackie the Ripper to mark International Women's Day. Because uh, I guess we, we got to balance the scale a little bit. 
you know, too, too, too many men that uh, have taken a lot of part in history. So let, let's just manipulate history in order to celebrate Women Day by having Jackie the Ripper, which, um, as you can imagine, upset a lot of people. The tourist attraction, by the way, it's very expensive. It's like 50 pounds to visit. Horrible. Uh, located along London's South Bank, told visitors they would change the name of the serial killer from uh, Jack the Ripper into Jackie. Does that mean that Jack the Ripper is progressive? He, he is... Uh, you are a transgender. Wait, 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 wait. Taking to social media, one horrified user wrote, Hard to imagine that when you were all sitting around the table, as Sawa said, I got an idea, there wasn't anyone in the room who said, Are you kidding? You don't understand. They're progressive people. That's what they do. Like, they have ideas and they implement them. Who cares what you think about it? They are progressive. Are you progressive? No, you're not. Shut the fuck up. You're a peasant. Okay? Start a multi-billion dollar corporation or get elected into the government and then you can have something to say about it. Uh, who, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are looking at your betters and going, oh, it's a bad idea? No, it's a great idea. It's a progressive idea. Uh, with violence against women such a significant topic at the moment, this is an astonishing lack of judgment. Yes, but it's progressive judgment. While another person commented, I think maybe circle back with the people who were in the meeting. Oh, yeah, circle back. You think you can use their words against them? I uh, use my own spells against me. You don't circle back to them. They circle back to you. Because they got money and they got power and they're the Tsuyoi government. Progressive government. One person said, what the actual F is this London dungeon? You think this is an appropriate way to mark International Women's Day? Well, didn't they want representation? Like, didn't, didn't they want... How many male serial killers are there versus women? Like, you need, you need to balance the scales a little bit. Uh, start being progressive. Start, start thinking like a progressive person. While another added, uh, honestly, if there's a point to the London dungeon doing that, I have no idea what it is. And yeah, because you're a bigot. You need to go to university. You need to spend money, give them money to the university so they can lecture you on progressive topics, and then you will understand. Elsewhere, uh, Kim Manor, corporate head of communications at the domestic violence charity, told uh, by London, not only does it trivialize the systemic murder of women by a serial killer, but it makes a mockery of a day that is supposed to be about celebrating women's achievements. Shut up, bigot. In a press release which has since been deleted, the staff at the London Dungeon said, With men often sealing the spotlight when it comes to ghastly and gory crimes, he wanted to give ladies their gifts for International Women's Day. Oh, that is progressive. Yes. Yes, that is so progressive. Very ushikushi. You know, everyone that's against it is a bigot and is a sexist. If you're not a sexist, go visit the London Dungeon. Isn't that how marketing works nowadays? Isn't that how a product is supposed to be sold? You do something to antagonize the public, and when the public complains, you call them bigots, you call them trolls, and then your product sells, right? Isn't that like Hollywood marketing? Isn't that what progressive marketing is about? Right. Uh, sorry, I got a little bit carried away. I... <laughs> it's okay, chat. It's okay. The next story is, is a little bit more interesting, I promise you. It's, it's also about 8th of March. I mean, it was the gift that kept on giving. I tell you, it's like when people want a virtue signal, it brings out the best in them. It, it, it shows you what the people in charge really think. And here we have the logo for Scott Morrison's gender equality organization. Are you, are you ready to see it, chat? Are, are you ready to see the logo for Scott Morrison's gender equality organization? Are you ready? Are you sure? You know how you do it when you play poker and you slowly, like very slowly, reveal the cards in your hand? I'm going to do the same, like very, very slowly we're, we're revealing it. It's like, look, the logo is coming. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> you know what's even more funny? Like if you look at how much money they probably spent on this, it's quite a lot. Like usually... Uh, when, when governments spend money, they have a lot of money to spend because it's your money, you know, it's the taxpayer's money. So something gi freely given has no value. So, so it's not really their money. And it's like if someone goes like, hey, give me a million dollars, I need to make a logo. They're like, sure, why the fuck not? So that's how money is being spent properly, right, in, in the government. And uh, I'm, I'm curious, like, how much this logo costed? Some people say it's like a tampon. I guess if I tilt my head, I can see it like a tampon. <clears throat> yeah, 
You know, it's maybe it's like a uh, one one of those Rorschach tests, huh? To see if you're a man of culture or not. Like if you see the wrong thing, clearly you're a man of culture. So we best see correctly, chat. We best see correctly, cause Susan is watching. She's always watching. She doesn't want us to see correctly. But yeah, so uh, that was my uh, trip yesterday, trying to get a little bit of happiness in my life. Going on the internet, trying to see people being more miserable than me. But I thought that, you know, maybe that's not enough. Maybe I should do something else. I'm going to listen to the comedians because everything is political right now. So the least political thing is actually politics itself. So I wanted to see, like, what, what do the brave leaders of the free world have to say? And it was St. Patrick's Day, so they had a couple of jokes. Let's listen to the U.S. president joke about the Irish. Father, uh, before I begin, bless me, Father, for I'm about to sin. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> well, I just want you to know, I may be Irish, but I'm not stupid. I married Dominic Giacoppa's daughter. Wow, I didn't know you can make jokes like that anymore. I didn't think that's progressive. It's a little bigoted, isn't it? That's, uh... Not okay, that's a big oof like they like to say on Twitter. The joke police on Twitter must be asleep on St. Patrick's Day. I think they had a little bit too much to drink. Because if I made the joke like that, it's a big yikes. It's a, oh my god, like everyone would clutch their pearls and they were like... <laughs> but when the US president makes a joke like that, it's fine. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, but, but like, you know, it is equality under the law. Because I guess like if I were to become president one day... I too could make jokes. Like, if you're a comedian, that's what you need to do. Become the president of the United States and then you can make offensive jokes. So anyway, while I was watching uh, one politician, might as well watch another. Let's see, the, a very beautiful poem by uh, Nancy Pelosi. I, want to, I got this message this morning from Bono. And, and most of us, we're always, whether we're in Ireland or here, or whatever it is, Ivano has been a very Irish part of our lives. And he said, Ireland's sorrow and pain is now the Ukraine, and St. Patrick's name is now Zelensky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish I could afford Nancy and Joe Biden to write my jokes. I mean, this show would blow up. It managed to get thousands of viewers. I would manage to get hundreds of thousands of subscribers. If only I could get them to write my jokes, but unfortunately, I'm poor. I'm very poor. I can't afford it. Uh, but, good news. I, I assume they had a very good St. Patrick's Day. It was very productive because... Uh, if you listen to, to Nancy speak about Ukraine, you start to wonder, um, does she have a little bit too much to drink? Like, what, what is going on there? Because the pronunciation was a little bit off. But they know that we can't go there. Uh, the, the, Putin is trying to bait the trap so that uh, we co go in, and that's the beginning, could be the beginning of World War III. A uh, Putin totally irresponsible using weapons that are not allowed under the Geneva Con Convention. Putin, who uh, threatens chem use of chemical weapons, um, nuclear, and the rest. So they know that we can't, but it's the ask. Now, he was uh, this morning more. Let's if we can't have an if we can't have a no-fly zone, let us have our own, and we need the airplanes to come in. Yeah, I'm sorry, chat. I, I don't know what to do. I, I know a lot of you keep asking me, like, stop talking about the conflict. Talk about something else. But it's very difficult. Like, everywhere you go in the news, it's the conflict. It is there. It's hounding me everywhere on the internet, at television. I mean, look, even if you want to talk about classic music, you can't. The Daily Mail Online. A Russian piano prodigy by the age of 20 who was due to make his Canadian debut with the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, is dropped after people emailed to complain despite him being outspoken against the war in Ukraine. Mmm, progressiveness, diversity, inclusion, mmm, equity. Except for this guy. No inclusion for this guy. 
exclusion. Why? Was he having the wrong thoughts? Was he a bigot? No. It's his citizenship. His citizenship. Horrible. Not okay. We checked the papers. We looked at papers. No, 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 no. So, um, you know what? I would require, though, like, you, you know what would make Canada even more progressive? In fact, the whole West should have this. Like, I'm going to tell you an idea that all of you are going to love. Like, this is going to be so progressive. We're going to so progressivize it here, guys. We're not even going to send spaceships to Alpha Centauri. We're just going to build wormholes all the way to Alpha Centauri. That's how progressive we're going to be. As a free, liberal, and democratic society. So how about we get restaurants to require proof of Ukraine support? Wouldn't that be progressive? Wouldn't that be left leaning? Isn't this something that the Democrats should rally behind? Like, think about this way. You go on social media, you put your flag there in the bio, and then you get a QR code on your phone, and when you go to a restaurant, you have to show proof. You show your cell phone, and it's like, look, I support it, all right? You can come, and you can have a sit. You can eat. You know, maybe in the future... We're going to see news like uh, Daniel Mendele have told he will be banned from Wimbledon unless he denounces Vladimir Putin. That, that, now that would be a society that I want to live in. A future very, very, what's the word? Tell me the word, chat. Tell me the word. Progressive. Yes, very progressive, forward-thinking, left-wing society that I would be proud of living in. So I was really happy, you know, very optimistic about the future. Uh, all of a sudden, all of my worries are being uh, put away when I notice a fellow Tavarish, a fellow comrade, suffering. And, and this doesn't please me, by the way. This, this really hurts me. Like, I don't want to see other people in pain. And apparently, Hassan Piker on Twitter said that he has been robbed. And this, you know, it, it saddened me. Um, because... This is uh, relatability. See, it's not representation. Because he's an American. I'm not American, so, so he doesn't represent me. But it, it's the human connection that I felt to Hassan. You know, the, the relatability of him being robbed. Because I've been robbed too. I have also been robbed. So, so now there's this connection between me and him. It brought us together. And, and it makes me want to have a conversation about the gas prices. So far... And by the way, the American people just trying to stay above water don't understand this. You tell them what the American Recovery Act was, they look at you like, what are you talking about? Why don't you understand, bigot? It's bigger than you. Yeah, you can't stay above water. Who cares? This is about America. This is about our democracy. We have to treat climate change like the existential crisis that it is. And subsidies for fossil fuel corporations. Ban new drilling on federal lands and waters. Hold oil executives accountable. Rally the world to raise the commitments of the Paris Agreement. What's that? Your cost of living is too high. You can't afford to buy food. $10 of lettuce. Just stop being poor, you bigot, and buy a Tesla. Why can't you afford to buy a Tesla like normal people? Cheapest one is $70,000. What? Is it a problem? Look, asking people to get an ID is racist because there are people who can't afford the $20 to get an ID. But asking them to buy a Tesla is progressive, enlightening, forward-thinking. You have the academia on your side. You have the social media on your side. You have the good guys and the corporations on your side. That's why you need to be progressive and left leaning Now, the question is, does Joe Biden have a Tesla? Ah, you never thought that is going to be asked, did you? Well, it was. Let's see what the answer was. Just one yeah. more about electric vehicles. You guys are pushing electric vehicles today. This is a president who always talks about the power of our example. Mm -hmm. Does he own an electric vehicle? Presidents of the United States don't do a lot of driving. He's posted videos where he's revving the engine of his Corvette in Wilmington. He owns cars. And he also has driven electric vehicles as president, does as he, is to give a model to the rest of the country. Does he own one? I think the president's record on this is clear, Peter. Presidents of the United States, current, and when they are no longer, typically are not doing a lot of driving. Go ahead. There you go. There are multiple paths on escaping the predicament. Number one, stop being poor and buy a Tesla. Number two, become the president of the United States, and then you don't have to do a lot of driving. Then you can suck, 
you can suck the money from the taxpayer. You go like, and all of your problems go away. And that is socialism. That is why a lot of smart people support socialism. You take the money from the taxpayer, you go like, and then you give it to yourself. But it's important to lie to them. Like you lie to the people, it's like, hey, we're going to redistribute wealth. We're going to have equity. But in reality, you just take it from them and you give it to yourself. You give it to yourself and don't give it back. So anyway, this was uh, This Week is Stupid. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll be live streaming after this. Why is it called live streaming, by the way? Why can't I call it dead streaming? I'll be dead streaming after this. I'm a little bit depressed. After reading that news, I should have gotten cheerful, but instead I got depressed. Maybe you guys can cheer me up by joining the chat on my other channel. Uh, there's a link into the pinned comment. I know it's hard. I know, but please do it for me. Do it for me. Scroll down. Just move the mouse. Scroll down a little bit. There's like literally the first comment that's pinned and there's a link. You click on it and it takes it to my live stream. I need you. Chat, I need you in my life. So come to my live stream. We're going to have some fun. And I'll see you guys there. Take care.